Hi there, welcome to Highway Vineyard Church. We are so sorry that we can't be together physically on this special day. However, we've got something that is so special, so exciting. We have our very own production of The Babe That Made Christmas. This is going to blow you away. So enjoy this and have a great Christmas. The Babe Who Made Christmas. Now, we all know that Christmas begins with a story and at this time it is obligatory to make sure the Jews and the Gentiles and Greeks, the Catholics, Protestants, Baptists and Freaks assemble to hear our Christmas recital, The Babe Who Made Christmas is our chosen title. Our story is over 2,000 years old, 
much older than most other stories you're told, before Lady Gaga or the PlayStation, WhatsApp or twerking took over the nation, a time long ago, a place far, far away. But people did still have their taxes to pay. So in your mind's eye, we're leaving our home and traveling southeast to the city of Rome. If you're unsure why, you'll just have to trust us as we're starting our tale with Caesar Augustus. So Caesar Augustus got up one bright morn with a scratch and a stretch and a bit of a yawn. And today, as soon as he was out of his bed, he was possessed of a thought that just won't leave his head. I'm Caesar Augustus. I rule all these lands. I can get what I want with a clap of my hands. I've got horses and chariots and oodles of riders. I've got rubies and diamonds and more gold than Midas. I'm richer than Herod. I've got Muller in wads. It's so clear to all I've been blessed by the gods. But the thought I've been thinking and thunking a lot is exactly how much of each thing have I got? So he called in his scribe and said, Take down these orders. Send people out to the furthest of borders. Let a census be taken. Let a census be done. Oh, counting my things will be such super fun. Every province and city and hamlet and town. Go count all the people and write it all down. Every weddings and births and even the funerals. Show me the numbers. I, I mean, Roman numerals. So the message went out at Caesar's behest that a census be taken of all he possessed. This was the first census while Quirinius was governor of Syria and every man went to his own town to register. Well, one of these folk is a man we'll call Joe and his wife was called Mary, as I'm sure you all know. But before Mary had the fame of Beyonce, she was a happy young girl who was just Joe's fiance. It was a quarter past midnight in old Nazareth town. Any creatures now stirring weren't making a sound. Our hero, young Mary, was quite fast asleep with a calm, sweet composure of a young Meryl Streep. She'd been lying there sleeping and dreaming for hours of weddings and dancing and bridesmaids with flowers. Then, out of the inky blue dark of the night, an angel appeared like a bright shining light. Mary awoke and jumped out of her bed. She gathered her thoughts and nervously said, Oh, angel from heaven, you gave me the jitters. I almost, she cried, jumped right out of my knickers. Greetings to you, you are so highly blessed. The Lord is with you, there's no need to look stressed. There's no need to look stressed? Mary cried out in fear. We don't get too many of your sort round here. Tell me, what did I do to deserve such an honour? Did I die in the night? Tell me, am I a goner? You're perfectly fine, so lighten that throne. Though I've big news for you, you might want to sit down. I have a message for you from the High Holy One. You will conceive of a child and give birth to a son. You will call this boy Jesus and he will be greater and called the son of the Most High Creator. He will rule over Jacob's whole clan for good measure and will sit on the throne of King David forever. Mary paused for a while. That's a lot to process, but there's one tiny detail I have to address. If life has a lotto, I've definitely won it. But that thing you need to have kids, I ain't done it. There are mysteries in life, but of this I am certain. I know for a fact I'm like so totes a virgin. The angel said back, without giving specifics. The Holy Spirit will sort out the logistics. The Holy One born will be called Son of God. But before I return to my angelic squad, you should hear the good news about Lizzie, your cousin. Yes, in her old age, she has one in the oven. God answered her prayers that were given in meekness. Her husband, so shocked, is now totally speechless. The child will bring joy, I told them myself. Oh, and mother and baby are both in good health. I am the Lord's servant, she said, 
bowing her head. Let all these things happen just as you have said. As the angel departed, Mary said, So, how in the world am I going to tell Joe? Joe'd been faffing and flustered, his so solid plans had been turned into custard. He knew what was what, and he knew left from right. Now all that he knew was turned up overnight. He had plans for his plans. He knew where he was going. Now he just couldn't stand all this crazy not knowing. This wasn't supposed to happen. He'd ordered his life. He'd made his own business. He was getting a wife. 
but the wife's situation was driving him mad. Because she's having a baby and I ain't the dad. She's come up with some tale of divine interventions. But he just couldn't hear it despite good intentions. While the actual truth he may never uncover, he couldn't deny he did really still love her. So a quiet breakup kept honour intact. They'll go their own ways, then that will be that. It's late, thought Joe, his eyes heavy and yawning. Maybe things won't seem so bad by the morning. So resting his head on his goose feather pillow, he curled up in a ball like a cold armadillo. And as Joseph sunk in the mists of the dreaming, a light filled the room from the floor to the ceiling. An angel appeared looking larger than life and said, Do not be afraid to call Mary your wife. You've got it all wrong. You've got it all twisted. This child is God's son. The angel insisted. So when Joseph awoke, he ran straight to her side, told Mary he loved her and made her his bride.
So if you remember, we said at the start how Caesar Augustus really took counting to heart. Well, the way that it worked was that each Dick, Harry and Tom had to return to the place where they'd come from. So Mary and Joe had to go on a journey using Joe's cart as a ramshackle gurney. Feeling safe on the cart took Mary's fullest attention, her ankles now swollen with water retention. How far is it now to where we are going? But without a sat-nav, there was no way of knowing. It's about four days walking to Old Bethlehem. He told her again and again and again. Then later, with Mary sleeping at Joe's insistence, he saw city lights glowing way in the distance. And as they approached the Bethlehem gates, an excitement engulfed them that's hard to translate. It was partly the joy of a reached destination and partly the sound of some near celebration and partly the thrill and the fear to be had when she'd soon be a mum and he'd soon be a dad. But pushing those thoughts to the back of their minds, a place to rest up was the first thing to find. So leaving his wifey cakes, guarding their stuff, Joe thought finding a room should be easy enough. He knocked on the door of hotel number one. Sir, have you a room? No mate, we ain't none. He knocked on the door of hotel number two. Sir, have you a room? No, I bid you adieu. He knocked on the door of hotel number three. Sir, have you a room? I'll take anything free. We have no rooms, he said, slamming the door. Perhaps I'll have more joy at place number four. Place number four was stupidly busy. Place number five was so full it was silly. Places six, seven, eight all said there's no spaces, as did the next several dozen tea places. Dejected, Joseph went back to his spouse, thinking, how could he tell her that there's no guest house? She looked deep in his eyes and she said, quickly spoken, Joe, get me a room, cause my water's just broken. Spurred on by duty and traces of panic, he strode back to the first door, his face set like granite. He banged on the door, he puffed up his chest. Mary couldn't help be a wee bit impressed. The door opened a crack, but Joe pushed it wide. He paused not a moment and stepped right inside. He grabbed the innkeeper, his voice now all shaky. My wife, Joe squeaked, is having a baby. I wish I could help, but I've got to assume you must know I can't magically make up a room. You've got to have something, sir, my employer will take any cupboard or cranny or corner. I'll tell you what, sir, I'm willing and able. For a shekel a night, I'll rent you my sable. They haggled a bit, then the innkeeper's daughters led the couple out back to show them their quarters. They looked around the stable at the grime and the gloom and imagined a nice sterile hospital room. The events of this evening must all be God's will. Do you think this baby can even get ill? He'll be fully human and fully divine. Either way, my dear, I'm sure he'll be fine. What happened next, though, is not for this play, but there was shouting and screaming, it's quite fair to say. When the screaming all stopped, there were just sounds of joy. Then Joseph burst out and announced, It's a boy!
exposed to the rain were shepherds who while guarding their ward were playing a game to stop being bored i spy can you now guess the thing that i'm seeing beginning with s it's sheep barry it's always sheep now think of one better i'm falling asleep you're falling asleep man i'm not even tired i never have been not from when i was hired now, being a shepherd's the best job I've had. It's all I've ever wanted since I was a lad. You want to be sat up here night after night, fighting the wolves and the threat of frostbite? What I love is the view, Jack. Look down at the city. Those twinkling lights look ever so pretty. I think I should have listened to what your dad said. He told me that you're a bit touched in the head. I wonder what it's like to live right down there with the buzz of the high city life in the air. Where'd you get off with those airs and those graces? You and me, mate, we ain't going places. Those twinkling lights, boy, forget that daft notion. This shepherd in life ain't got room for promotion. King David was a shepherd and he did all right. He got promoted after one tiny fight. Yeah, fire the giant with Saul as the backer. Had you cut his head off, boy, you'd need a stepladder. No, history books won't remember our names. Now let's cut all this chat and get back to our game. I spy with my little eye. Uh, what's that big glowing thing up in the sky? But before he could say it should start with a letter, an angel appeared and made Jack a bed wetter. Do not be afraid, just calm down and unwind. I have great news of great joy for you and mankind. God sent us from heaven to you here on earth, so you could hear tell of the Holy One's birth. In the city of David is born a young boy. He's come to save earth and to fill it with joy. You'll know that it's him, and here it gets stranger. He'll be the one fast asleep in the manger. So while I am joyed by my angelic choir, I'll tell you that he is the promised Messiah. 
Glory to God in the highest of heaven and peace to the earth and to all who are blessed. Angels from the realms of glory, bring your flight along the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come. Joseph and the small child. Joe showed them the baby and Mary just smiled. Then Barry and Jack ran out singing God's praises sounding to all like a couple of crazes. And then came from heaven this whole angel choir singing the praises of God the Messiah. They sounded like Kerry, not Jim, but Mariah. There were then some wise men who had come from afar. They searched for a king as they'd seen his star. The youngest wise man, more a wise man in training, said, There is one thing you could do with explaining. We've come all this way from the far distant east with a pain in my rear that's not ceased but increased. But now we're here in Jerusalem city, not following the star seems a bit of a pity. The oldest wise man said, without any malice, We're here for a king. So we'll go to the palace. Details like that you'll learn not to ignore. So pop up those steps and knock on the door. The youngest wise man did just as he was told. Those tasks were his job because he wasn't so old. The mood in the palace was several shades cooler as they were presented to Herod the ruler. Where is the one who's the king of the Jews? We looked to the stars and they gave us the news. I am King Herod. Here I have no equal. Tell me exactly who are you strange people? We are wise people. Some call us mages. 
We've been travelling here for ages and ages. And the stars, they told you of all these events? Yes. They replied. We even brought presents. This is upsetting news. I like being king. There must be a way just to stop this whole thing. Then Herod got an idea, an awful idea. King Herod got a terrible, awful idea. I know just what to do, he said, stifling a gloat. But even for me, this is really cutthroat. I'll have the boy killed, but where will he be? I'll get those fool mages to find him for me. This isn't the place where you find this king boy, but I too want to see this new bundle of joy. Go find this royal child and come back to me here. I just want to praise him. You've nothing to fear. Jesus once they'd followed the star. The first one stepped forward and held out a jar. 
Mary said... But what is it? And he said... It's myrrh. And the other two gifts, it turned out they were... Frankincense for worship and gold fit for a king. Joe said to Mary... What strange gifts to bring. The gold will be useful, but frankincense, why? And the myrrh, are they saying he's going to die? They smiled and they nodded and they waved them goodbye. And Joseph repeated... But frankincense, why? Though Mary, she stored all these things in her heart and pondered them quietly when they were apart. Back at the palace, while clutching the crown, a paranoid Herod was pacing around. It's just dawned on me, both alas and alack, those stupid wise mages are not coming back. They'd gone a different way home. Strange though it may seem, King Herod was evil. They'd been warned in a dream. I've been fooled. I've been tricked. King Herod went wild. That's it. I've decided to kill every child. So Mary and Joe took the babe from the manger. They fled far to Egypt because they were in danger. They were warned in a dream by an angel that night. They packed all their things up before morning light. They stayed there in Egypt till Herod was dead. Then went home to Nazareth, just as God said. This story we've told isn't just to be pleasant or while we're all waiting to get our next present. Christmas is not about ribbons. It's not about tags. It's not about packages, boxes or bags. It's not even about babies or those wise men, about shepherds or angels or innkeepers then. It should be about his reason for coming. And I think you'll find his reason quite numbing. This babe who made Christmas, he came for a reason and not just to kick off our holiday season. God sent him to die for he had love for us all. He died on the cross for the tall and the small. Now Jesus was perfect. Our sin was to blame. It should have been us, but he died all the same. But if he just died, that's no reason for cheer. There's no reason to celebrate this every year. He died and was buried, and then he did rise, and then he ascended to his home in the skies. Now, you have two choices, as we've had our say. Will you throw out Jesus on this Boxing Day? Or will you decide now to think it all through? This babe who made Christmas now, is he for you? Joy to the world, the Lord is mine. The earth is
Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much for everyone who made that possible. You did a great, fantastic job. So, right at the end, there was a challenge. The question was left hanging. You now have two choices, as we've had our say. Will you throw out Jesus on this Boxing Day, or will you decide now to think it all through? The babe who made Christmas, now is he for you? Will you decide to think it through? Will you choose to do something with the story that you've just heard? What will you do with the babe? Will you enable Jesus to come into your life? I love the verse, the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What will you do with this great gift? Now, one of my favourite hymns at Christmas time is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And the last verse says this, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. My suggestion is this, why don't you take those last few words, the, those last few words of a little town of Bethlehem and make that your prayer. It's basically say, sorry, thank you, please. Sorry, cast out my sin. Thank you. Thank you that you've come to us, Emmanuel. Please come into my life. So let's use those verses, those words again and make it our prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to me, I pray. Cast out my sin and be born in me today. I hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to me, abide with me, my Lord Emmanuel. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Christmas. Thank you.